So you might think in Diablo 2, there's not really a lot of like build diversity. Essentially for one character, there's like one build that works and that's like all you can play because that's all there is, right? Well, that's not the case, maybe for certain characters, but definitely today we're looking at the Necromancer and we're looking at the three best Necromancer builds that there are in Diablo 2 Resurrected. Now to look at these, I'm essentially going to go over and do build guides for every single one of them, but there's a lot in common gear wise and maybe statistic wise between them. So we're going to go over the stuff that's identical between all three of these builds that absolutely slapped on monsters here in Diablo 2 Resurrected. So we're just going to go over them real quick. First of all, the stats, you want just enough strength and dex to wear your gear. Now I accidentally have an obnoxious amount just because I have on the gear piece Enigma that gives you a ton of strength that I didn't always have on. So really you just need 156 or more to wear your spirit shield. We have all the rest into Vitality dumped in here right behind my head. You don't really need to see it, but mana, you don't really add any extra to it for any of these three builds we're about to do. Now we'll look at the gear for two of the characters. They have actually used the exact same gear, and one of them has a lot of different, like other little options that we'll go over a little bit when we get to that particular one. But for all these Necromancers, all three of them, you want to have for the uh, kind of the best end game here, we have Heart of the Yoke over here for casting. We've got a Spirit Shield. Feel free to pause, take a longer look at each one if you would like. We have a Shaco, we have an Enigma right here, obviously awesome for teleporting around, a Caster Amulet right here with 10 FCR or more, that is actually 10 FCR or more is actually important here. Uh, we got a couple of SOJs at the rings, Trang's Gloves go to for the Necromancer, we've got Arachnus Mesh, and we've got Alder's Boots that makes up for the Missing Fire Res on the Spirit. Obviously we're going to want to torch and Annie, and on this particular one right here, having a Sunder Charm isn't particularly important. You could perhaps throw on a physical or fire, but it really doesn't matter for the, either of these first two, really. We do have a Geeds for the Magic Find as well. Over on Swap, obviously, you want the Call to Arm and the Spirit. And on our Mercenary, for the kind of the best option endgame, we got Infinity and in Darl's Visage and a Fortitude. Now, as for this stuff, going with budget options over here isn't going to affect the gameplay too much, but this is obviously the best choice. And you see our little buddy running around right over here. He is, of course, made out of an insight, so we get that mana regeneration from that meditation aura. So now that we have that out of the way, what's the first build we're going to look at right here? This is going to be dun, 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 the Summon Necromancer, my absolute favorite. Now, when you do the Summon Necromancer, you're maxing out the Ray Skeleton and Skeleton Mastery. Now, these skeletons do a little bit of damage, but the main thing is these things just eat attacks. It distracts everything and keeps them occupied. Now, on top of that, we're going to go down to Iron Golem, and we do have the Iron Golem running around, and we want him to survive. But actually putting points in the Iron Golem doesn't really help him survive at all. It just boosts up the damage and the uh, defense, but it doesn't really do a whole lot. What you actually want to do is dump in to Golem Mastery. 720% extra life you see right here on the Golem Mastery. So the Golem Mastery actually is maxed out, and there's just one point into actually having Iron Golem. Uh, another good thing, if you're ever going to take out any of the larger bosses, maybe you're going to run the Chaos Sanctuary and take out Diablo at the end, getting one point down to revives helps out a ton. I only bring up revives personally, my personal opinion and experience. Bring up revives just before you go to take on Diablo or any of the larger bosses that you end up using for this particular build, and it helps kill it a lot faster. Now, kind of one point wonder for any of these builds, you got Bone Armor and Obviously, we're going to be maxing out Corpse Explosion. All of these builds are sort of based around Corpse Explosion, but they're all a little bit different. For this particular build, we're using Amp Damage because the Corpse Explosion, half physical, half fire. So it's going to boost up the damage for the physical half of that. And also, our Skeletons and our Mercenary are dealing out physical damage, getting that first body down so we can pop them up. So I did go ahead and raise up our little Skeleton Army here, but I do want to point out with this stuff right here, FCR Breakpoint, 125 is the top breakpoint. Um, the lower one is 75, which you could even get to with budget gear. But here we got kind of the end game setup. This is on players seven difficulty. Obviously, go ahead and, and battle orders it up and we'll go ahead and head out here Amp damage them. Once the first monster goes down, you just go ahead and start popping the corpses. Right here is kind of a, a normal place to test stuff out. And once you pop, pop, pop and down they go. The speed at which that first kill happens is really determines the speed that you're actually going to be clearing out the mobs, because once you get down a body or two, it just, everything just starts melting. See right there, boom, boom, and, and the whole corpses just all start melting. This is a really good build, obviously out here to test it at Elgin Shank is the go-to, but it's good in a lot of other places. Now I just turned it down to players one, let's say you're holy grailing and look at that players one, just everything melting. But if you're doing a single player holy grail, coming down into the pits, 
you can get all of your 85 items down here. And boy, it just absolutely melts everything. Your mercenary really does wreck stuff so bad. And then when you pop a corpse or two, everything just gets deleted. This really is a great character for doing the Holy Grail because, like I said, it clears so much area so fast. Alrighty, now we gotta set the players three and ooh, the Chaos Sanctuary is terrorized. Go ahead and slam the ant damage out there. Wait for one of the bodies to go down and start blowing everything up. They get disintegrated. Just absolutely disintegrated. Oh, and there we got a Sunder Charm, I believe. Yeah, yeah, we could pick it up, so it is. Minus 85 lightning, not worth it, but there's a nice little pack to show it off also once again of some champions over here. Just find those corpses and start popping bodies and boom, boom, boom. Everything just goes away. This is definitely one of my top three builds of all time. I love playing this one because it's so simple, so easy, and so powerful. And now we're going to move off the Summon Necro onto the next one on this list, and that is the Bone Spear Necromancer. Now, I'm going to go over the things that are different here. Uh, the only thing is actually in the skill tree is all the same gear, all the same everything else set up. So just uh, the same Hoto, the same spirit. There are some different things you could do on gear choices. And feel free to let me know what you'd like to do down in the comments. But I like this uh, super high-end uh, caster setup. Personally, get to the 125 breakpoint for teleporting around super fast. And then we look at the skill tree. And this is also set up probably maybe a little bit different. You got to remember what I do with it. I hunt Holy Grail items. So a lot of lower players counts. But you killing the champions as fast as you possibly can teleporting around. So... Uh, I actually have down here on the Bone Spear uh, maxed out, of course. We have maxed out Bone Spear. We got maxed out Bone Prison. And I put the rest of the points into Bone Wall here. So a minor oversight. I should have put the remainder of the points into Bone Wall and not Bone Prison. And you'll see why in just a second when we get to the gameplay. We would like to get more points into this stuff. But what I went ahead and did is get more clear speed of a giant area with uh, Corpse Explosion. And I did that by having my infinity here on my mercenary and having the insight on my iron golem. Once again, it's the exact same setup right, right here. As for the curses, we're going with amp damage. Once again, just one point into there uh, to boost up the damage of the physical for the bone spear and also for the mercenary killing stuff and also for the corpse explosion for summons. I wanted to uh, keep that golem alive. So you kind of need to max out golem mastery to keep your iron golem alive if you're going to use one. And that's the route I went. Another route you go is save these points right here and you just go ahead and have your clay golem and then put the remainder points to get a little bit more damage out of the bone spear. But because generally I use this build for lower players count and farming those champions, like I said, P1 pits and things like that. This is the way I like to build it. Just for example purposes, we're going to come out here and I actually have it on players three. And if you want to, you can slam down these bone walls for safety purposes, but you don't necessarily have to. We'll go ahead and shoot a couple of these guys. I forgot to put down my amp damage. And go ahead and pop some bodies. And you see, works really darn good. I will grab these boots because I know it really irks people when I don't check stuff out here that could be god tier, right? Go ahead and hop down here once again for this pack. And let's go ahead and we'll just drop a wall right here. Why not? Go ahead and tack that pack. We'll hit them with the... Well, and I don't really like... There was a lot of guys on the other side there. So we'll hit that down. Shoot a couple bone spears. And actually my mercenary went ahead and wrecked some monsters before I could even worry about it. And this is players three out here. Uh, let's go ahead and try it in another area. There was a small charm there, but I'll let you guys uh, leave you there and wonder what that small charm was, huh? We're heading out to that same terrorized chaos sanctuary here. We'll kind of do the same thing. Here's some monsters. We'll go ahead and throw down the bone wall just to kind of keep them distracted. Shoot a couple monsters. Make sure you hit them with the amp damage. Start popping some bodies. And there they go. You don't have to use the bone wall if you don't want to. You can go ahead and let your mercenary just handle it, but uh, that's all up to you. Knock down a couple monsters. I meant to use Corpse Explosion, not Teleport. And really just absolutely melt them. Once again, this is Players 3. So we'll hit a couple more. Amp damage them. Throw our Spear out. Corpse Explosion. And the pack's dead. Even even packs at a different distance, you know, you get a lot of range on that Corpse Explosion. And now for example purposes, I actually set this to a Players 8 Pits. Another obviously go-to Magic Find location. Not exactly the most dense area, but... Go ahead and hit them down. Bone spear a few. Get one of them down. Start corpse exploding. There goes the pack. Go ahead and move on. I know there are some behind me, but no big deal. Get to a, a better area. Throw down some of those. Amp damage these monsters. Let's lure a few more. They're, this area is a little more spread out, but it'll be it'll be fun. Hit a few of these guys. Knock a few down. Corpse explode. And go ahead and move on. I won't let you guys wait on this one. Let's see if we get something good on this small charm. Huh, fellas? 
Ah, nothing good. We'll go ahead and hop down to the lower level. Maybe we'll get a little more density. Drop some bone walls just for the safety. They'll attack that stuff. We had a few bone spears out here. A couple monsters went down. Start popping bodies and absolute wreckage. So even with this bone wall, you get a ton of survivability, a ton of safety that you uh, would normally get out of the skeletons that you had on the summoner. So uh, yeah, a lot going for this particular build. It is really uh, even better than I remember now that I haven't actually used this one in a while. Now look at the third and final necro build that I say is the top three necromancer builds. There are a few other ones, but they're not nearly as good. They're more like niche builds, some people would call it. But the only thing that really changed on this one, first off, we've got a D-Web. If you can get your hands on one, on your character, that minus 49% to enemy poison res is bananas. On top of that, more of a budget option. You could put it on with this one as well, but you can go ahead and throw on the three-piece Trangs. You already have the gloves on. Usually for more budget options, they'd go with the Trangs belt and then the Trangs head over here. And with those three pieces, you get, I believe it is minus 25 to enemy poison res. That is another great option even to go along with this particular one, but I decided not to. So on top of that, you can throw yourself a Poison Sunder Charm over here. It's not always necessary. There aren't really a crazy amount of poison uh, resistant monsters. You can go ahead and throw one over here though. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in there. And uh, beyond that, everything else is the same. We still have Infinity over here, even though Conviction Aura does not minus the poison resistance. It still does help out with the corpse explosion, which is a ton of the damage that you're getting. Now, as for the skills, one point wonder over here, obviously for the bone armor, we want corpse explosion. This is where I put my remainder points, but you're maxing out all of poison Nova, of poison explosion and poison dagger, because those two are synergies for poison Nova. Now over on summoning skills, kind of the same thing with the iron golem being an insight. Once again, to get the, or the meditation aura, we're maxing out the golem mastery to keep that thing alive as much as possible. And then we actually want to get down, 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 and use lower resistance because lower resistance does actually minus the poison res, unlike the conviction aura on the infinity. So let's go ahead and test this thing out and you can watch this melt stuff down. Now we did drop down a cast frame, so we're teleporting a little bit slower, but that's not really that big a deal. Look at these monsters just melt when they get touched. Obviously this is players one act one, but just for an example, I love magic finding in the pits. So let's go ahead and hit it. What you do is you hit them with the poison and then corpse explode them and everything is just disintegrated. Now the poison will lower their, their life and the first one that dies usually hit by your mercenary when they have like half life left, they drop, you corpse explode. The corpse explosion is hitting monsters that only have half their life because the, the poison already melted it all away. Let's go ahead and find another good amount here and show you. Poison, first one dies, corpse explode and everything's instantly gone. This is a very good character, especially for doing things like the Holy Grail in an area like this. You can melt through this area super fast. Now we'll hit another one here as an example. I forgot how fun this is to be perfectly honest. Maybe I'm gonna use this a little more often now, huh? Let's go ahead and set it up to, let's go player seven difficulty as we jump down to the second level. See how this works in the pits, even on the higher players counts. So we'll hit them with the minus, boom, drop them down and boom, boom, boom. Even in the pits, it's not terribly much different than it was on players one when we were in the other areas. Look at all the monsters that die and then when you corpse explode, man, this character really does work freaking great. And there we got a Lemrune hiding over there, huh? So there we go, already finding GG stuff here on the video. Good old Lemrune, huh? We'll hang on to that. Another super common, super easy place to test out here. Uh, Eldritch and Shank, obviously. Getting hit by some arrows, oopsie. One monster goes down and start corpse exploding and boom, the pack is gone. You see they died a little bit slower because this is player seven difficulty after all. But we'll go ahead, there was Eldritch, go ahead and hit Shank's group also once again. Melt a couple of them there. Not get hit by a million of the uh, bull rats or whatever they're called. And corpse explode, corpse explode, and they're all gone. Probably be a good idea to actually use my bone armor, huh? And now we'll go ahead and hit this uh, Chaos Sanctuary Terrorize once again. We'll just go players three. I, I like running things on players three. It makes it a lot more laid back and easy. Where's some better packs to go after? These are boring packs, I don't know. Yeah, I guess we'll just go with this. So you hit them with the poison, and you got the lower res on them, and then you corpse explode, and the pack just goes away. We'll go ahead and move on. Here's some uh, larger pack, sure. Hit them with some poison, back up a little bit. Down goes a couple of monsters, corpse explode. Boom, boom, boom. Just swirl it around, boom, boom, capping them off, and move on. So there's where I think are the three best necromancer builds. Let me know anything that you would do differently. There's definitely some 
little changes that people could based upon preference on the gear or a few skills. So let me know anything you would differ down in the comments. Peace out, fellas, and keep slaying.